Good afternoon. It is another brand new edition of your popular current affairs program, 60 Minutes Nigeria, right here in the communication complex of your darling station, Independent Television. My name is Erosa Agbon Laho. It's always a delight to have you. You spending your 60 minutes with me is something I, I enjoy. And for those of you that will be joining us later on the show, you're also welcome. Today's program promises to be very, very educative, very enlightening. And uh, we have carefully selected very distinguished personalities, men who have also made remarkable impact in society, in the political scene, and of course, in the academia. Well, we are looking at uh, what is happening recently in Edo State, and it has to do with Governor Obaseki's refuter of Comrade Shaibu's allegations. Now, Comrade Shaibu is the deputy to Governor Godwin Obaseki, and the social media platforms, various social media platforms, we are awash with uh, uh, Shaibu's going to court to stop or preempt what is about to happen to him in terms of impeachment. He alleged impeachment plot and um, went to the court to actually get what we'll call injunction in case this is going to happen. And we have plaintiffs, we have defendants, and I must say that that actually generated a lot of reaction, not only in Edo State, not only in Nigeria, but in the diaspora. And a few days ago, Mr. Governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseke, refuted, cleared up the hair on the issue, and said that what is being discussed, that uh, there's a plot to impeach the deputy governor, he actually cleared up the air on that. Before I allow you watch that interview, let me quickly introduce. We have Ambassador of Peace with us, Andrew Eigaloa. Nice to have you with us today. Good afternoon. He is a communication strategist. He's also president of United in Democracy, a pressure group in Edo State. Once again, you are welcome. Thank you very much. We also have with us a man of God a minister of high repute, and also an analyst, Dr. Emeka Ekuga. Nice to have you with us today. Thank you, Agulago. Nigeria, Edo State, has always been the best. We <laughs> remain the best. OK, from the academia, we have a statistician, a man that can dissect any political issue, because you understand the political terrain very well. And we are talking about Dr. Maswell Osage, nice to have you with us. Thank you. And I uh, must I was, uh, <laughs> congratulate Dr. Maswell Osage. He has just been um, elevated. He has just been ordained a clergy, a reverend That's in the Church you. of God. Congratulations. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank and you. And also oh, now no. the HOD. Yeah, the HOD of computer science. Of computer science. Uh, yes, a lot has happened within these two weeks. <laughs> That's beautiful. So I just came back from Portaco yes. on the next day. All you know, I was to be with you on exactly, Thursday. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the next thing I heard, you are now the head of the Department of Computer Science yeah. Medicine in Dawsa University. I okay. said, wow. wow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, so many things Congratulations. Are the same time. We are proud of you. He's our Thank regular you. guest. Very, very regular. And I know that uh, our fans there enjoy him a lot. Okay, so let's just watch that interview where Mr. Godwin Obaseki, His Excellency, Governor of Edo State clear the air on this problem. It is a problem now because not so many people were comfortable with the allegations of the Deputy Governor uh, against His Excellency. Let's just watch the interview. Any plot or any scheme to impeach the Deputy Governor, Right Honorable Philip Schreiber. I have also checked and there is no such plan, or there was no such plan. So 
the court action that has now been taken by him, for me, is a thing of shock and disappointment that he has been in close consultations with friends from another party because he is not sure that you, the leaders of PDP, were going to allow or give him uh, the ticket for the governorship in 2024. Okay, that's His Excellency, the, the Governor of Edo State, uh, Mr. Godwin Obasiki. Like I told you, he needed to clear the air, and that is exactly what he did because he had in, uh, visitors from Edo North uh, PDP uh, members, PDP leaders from Edo North, and it was an opportunity for His Excellency to clear up the air on these allegations by one of their sons who is actually the Deputy Governor of Edo State. Like I told you, my guests are prepared to dissect this issue. Um, we'll start with uh, Ambassador Andrew Eigalua. Now, um, it's not a common thing in Edo State when there is a um, dispute, public dispute, between the Governor and the Deputy Governor to the extent that the Deputy Governor had to run to the court and they're alleging that he's about to be impeached. You know, it's not a common thing in a do state. So what's your reaction to this? Well, first and foremost, I would say it's a, a situation where one is too ambitious. The feud between the governor, his excellency, Governor Basaki, and his deputy Shaibu, I would liken it to a situation of a father and a prodigal son. How do you mean? Yeah. Because but I wouldn't I, want you to call the deputy governor a pretty good son. He said, said, said liking. Liking. Like, liking. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm liking. language. <laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> liking is a potential in nature. So, because I feel uh, Godwin Obaseki as the executive governor of Edo State uh, is one of the best governors we've seen in recent times in terms of governance and uh, mutual relationship with your worker, especially your immediate worker, which is deputy governor. If you retrospect how the deputy came into power, if you follow the politics there, you will know that the governor Basaki sacrificed a lot for God. And the fight with which brought uh, Shaibu to power, the governor is still fighting it today with the leaders of the party. Because I was part of the whole thing, following the proceedings. What they call old and new PDP. It was Obaseki they requested for, to come and join the party because he was a celebrity candidate at that time. There was no discussion about being a deputy. When they gave the ticket to Obaseki, because of who uh, Shaibu is to him, in, language, in political language, we, we call it carry along. Please don't leave me behind. What are the people going to say that you've left me behind? Okay, don't worry, I see what I can do. But the king went outside the scope of the, 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 the negotiation to now negotiate Philip Shaibu into the deal. You must still accept my deputy. That was what anger, that, was, that is the problem PDP is still facing today. All for Gordon Obaseki to give him a soft landing. They agreed and everything. They've been working together and all that. Let me tell you, go to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is at the discretion of the governor to give responsibility to the deputy governor to do anything he wants to do. If the governor wants to cripple you and make you redundant to your office, he can do that. But look at the case of the deputy governor of Edo State. It's like he's, he's a semi-governor. He was working freely, giving all the opportunities to do what he wants to do. He has won so many awards in the state and international because he was given opportunity to try to work effectively. For him to even insinuate that the governor wants to impeach him. And to, you know, what baffles me was like, even if you are about to be impeached, there's a process to it. You will be served an impeachment notice, which will last at least one week for you to respond. 
within that period, you can go to court for injunction. They've not, you've not been served. Default. It's like you, you are just battle ready for the governor. You want to fight, which I don't think there's any nece uh, it is necessary for such fights to have, you know, uh, emanated from the deputy governor. I think, uh, to me, the def deputy governor is being manipulated for, with, uh, by his cronies, people that are eating from you. That's politics for you. At times, as a politician, if you are doing well and uh, maybe your time wants to elapse, people walking around you, people you're stood. They will, because if, they, if you leave power, they will leave power. They won't get where to feed from. So they will be pushing you to do what you're not supposed to do. For God's sake, this is PDP. And it is crystal clear that the next governorship ticket should go to the central. Mathematically, it has been carved out. Although not, they've produced governor before, which is uh, come with the... Uh, Oshomole, he did eight years. He, the deputy, has, is going to do eight years. Edo South, Governor Basakis has done eight years. What about the Edo Centre? Are they going to be left out? So, the PDP leaders, they've sat down to say, oh, let's consider Edo Centre for now. Is there any agreement to that? I said, they've sat to say, let's okay. consider Edo Centre. It's an unwritten agreement. Yes, mutual, friendly yeah. agreement in, part, in politics. Yeah. Yes, we call it mutual agreement. Okay. It's not in the constitution, but you must abide to it. Like what happened uh, during the presidential election when Jonathan wanted to uh, contest. President John told Jonathan, look, there's a mutual agreement between myself and the Northerners that you're going to do one term. I've already agreed with this, but it's not in the Constitution. But people walking around Jonathan said, no, the Constitution says you have the right to contest. They pushed Jonathan to go and contest, and he saw what he, he got what he deserved. So this whole scenario, uh, I don't think... I think the leadership of the party should quickly wade into it okay. uh, because... Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Andre Galoa. You, you've made your opening remarks. Uh, let's get the thought of Dr. Emeka Ekuga, who is also a grassroots uh, a politician. Well, the uh, issue of the governor of Edo State and his deputy is like a, a father and son. Okay. And I think uh, I would prefer that language. Yeah, it's like a father and son. Okay. And uh, believe you me, there is always a time when a father and a son will have a, a dispute uh, regarding to one agreement or one thing or the other. That I want to register in the heart of people. But come to the area of uh, the deputy governor rushing to court for alleging impeachment. I think uh, something is behind it, just like uh, my, I do call him president. My president just said here, something is seriously behind it, and it is political on that tune. You know, there are people in the politics, like he said, who are busy eating from those that they are, that are principals, and they, if they don't find a way as this, they won't be able to have get what they want. And uh, this is exactly what I looked at. The, the deputy governor, in his way, and his, his, the way he acted in this issue, I don't think it was a very good move. Because you see the governor said there was nothing of such. But there is no smoke without a fire. Before he moves to court, something must have been happening. I remember some time ago he was asked to hand over the issue of uh, monitoring the revenue to direct to the governor's office. I think this matter have started before that uh, taking him to that, removing him from that uh, assignment. Because if not, I wouldn't see why uh, the governor will, uh, after how many years, close to their going out of the government and uh, to say he should uh, hand over the supervision of revenue to direct to his office. Something is wrong somewhere. But if the deputy governor was unable to clarify the issue of impeachment and he went to court, it's a very wrong move, and which you see everybody today condemning it. I read uh, something in the social media where, they were, where, some, where somebody was uh, writing, I, I, I may not quote them, and he said uh, the deputy governor should humble himself and go back and uh, plead or apologize to the governor. 
confirming that what he did is a very wrong thing. And uh, I also concur to that. Being somebody who has been humble from day one, from day one, when he was uh, 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 draw closer to the governor and become deputy governor, and so on and so forth, fought his own uh, 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 former principal, which is Adam Zoshomoli, to a standstill in support of uh, Governor Basike. I think if he realized also the, the hand Governor Basike handed over to him, like uh, comedy have said, I don't think anybody can even look at him as a deputy governor. In so many times and occasions, he has acted as a governor in a free hand without anybody challenging him on whatever uh, decisions he takes. Even when the governor returns from whatever vacation or whatever engagement outside the country, or even when he's in this country, he hands over to his deputy, giving him free hand. I think. He, 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 the governor played a very matured role, has been playing a very matured role in this regard. Politics outside. So I, I, also, I will also, uh, uh, you know, agree with those who have been writing that the deputy governor should also go back to apologize to the governor in a such move. If the, if the, government, if the governor and the House of Assembly members and the chief judge of the federation and other, prince, other, other actors in the government sector wants to impeach uh, uh, the deputy governor. I think it, it won't take them anything. We have been seeing issue of impeachments. It won't take them, they will come up. And people will see it, the, the those state Nigerians will see it clear. And they will start, you know, doing everything he can do in defense. If what they accuse him of is real, he faced the music. If what they accuse him is not true, you will see people that will also stand that people like us that believes in justice will stand up and say, no, Governor, go, governor you've not done it well. You've not done it well at all. And I'm sure he, they will listen and nothing of such will happen. It, it has been so difficult to see any elected uh, 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 functionary of any government in Nigeria being impeached today. Very difficult. So I wonder why the deputy governor will rush to court and allege impeachment, impeachment in a hurry. It, it, is, it is, you know, a kind of giving a lot of people serious concern. Okay. And they, above all, I also want to put it very clear here that the issue of this governor and deputy governor is nothing else than politicking. And it is focusing on 2024 whether we like it or not. Uh, let me react a little bit to what my president said here. When he talked about the, the governorship going to the central, am I correct? Yeah. The north has been able to deliver. The uh, south is on it up to this moment. Whether it goes to central or it remains, it goes back to north or it goes back to south. I think what is most important is to have somebody in a do state who will have the heart of the people, the minds of the people, the, the intention of the people, the, the, the uh, uh, desire of the people at heart. I think that is what is most important okay. to thank, me. Thank you, Doctor. We'll come back thank to you. that aspect of uh, um, politicking ahead of the 2024 uh, state governorship election. But let's just get the opening remarks of Dr. Uh, Maxwell Osage on this uh, imbroglio. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> okay, um, uh, let me start from somewhere. Yeah. When a child start questioning the paternity state of his life, yeah. uh, it means there is an issue. Okay. Now there is there is a way uh, God designed nature. Permit me to go through the Bible line. Okay. In Galatians 6 7, okay. it said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man so he ripped. I believe the conclusion and the summary of that particular uh, verse of the scripture I've quoted, you may have deduced it right now. I hang that for you. 
<laughs> to a dead use. To continue. <laughs> so. Okay, well, what do you get your own thoughts <laughs> on yeah. that? <laughs> Okay. I, guess I repeat again, yeah. Galatians 6 yeah. 7 said, Be yeah. not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow, he reaped. Yes. See, uh, I would not fought Shaibu, neither will I fought the governor. For every man that lives in the surface of the earth, the first point of call is your personal interest first. Mm. For every point of call is your personal what? Interest first. I go, sir, we follow politics. If you know a lot that happens in politics overnight, deputy governor can be removed. If he cannot secure himself overnight, he will be shown the easy door. Now, everybody is praising the governor right now. Why? Because he has to stand his ground to fight for his what? personal interest. And I also want to believe that by tomorrow, if the deputy governor succeed, many of us will still come back and say, that is the man. That is a human being for you. Now, but the point I'm trying to make here is this. You don't plant a seed like a mango seed and expect to reap a, a vegetable. If we say the principal is shocked of what has happened to him, the governor is shocked of what has happened to him, the governor should do what we call a retrospect. I don't know if you are getting me. A retrospect of his own antecedent in line with this politicking. What happened a few years back? Was someone shocked? Yes, someone was shocked. So it's not a new word in politics. So in politics, everybody has to secure their scope. Because if you don't secure it, someone will mix you up. Some persons call that uh, self-preservation. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, uh, 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 what's that? If I may let you know, yes, indeed, the deputy governor is one of the governors that has been given the freest opportunity to soar high in, in politics, governance or in, in politics yeah. by a governor, a city governor. It's not in anywhere. I, I appreciate the... Okay, before you continue, yeah. based on what you just said now, so many persons have just forgotten when His Excellency, the former governor of Edo State, Chief Lucky Benedio was governor, mm -hmm. then Chief uh, Ogiadome, Ogiadome was his deputy, mm -hmm. and he allowed Ogiadome to be acting governor at the time. Yes, but the, thank you, yes, that happened. Yes. But if you look at the way, the freedom, the total freedom given to the deputy governor in this region, I understand why that was done, because the same hand of fellowship uh, to him is what is uh, also given to the SSG, if you know, the SSG. Now, but what I don't know about all these politicians is that some, some of them think that they are popular. So by aspiring high, they will get the people's vote. And I ask myself, I'm, I'm objective here. Okay. I don't have anybody I'm supporting. Yes. Or the, I'm objective here. Sometimes I ask myself, if you have been in governance for over 20 years, is he a personal property? <laughs> Can't you go back to your normal business and continue? Why, why must you? Why must you? Because if you have done this to your principal, it is expected that somebody will also do the same thing to you in no distance time. The man entrusted everything in your hand. He gave you all the freedom you needed in this world. All you just have to do. The whole thing, see, uh, 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 that? Let me tell you, I told somebody, a group of persons, mm -hmm. I said the dance that the governor and the deputy governor is practicing will soon come to the landline. That was like two months ago. We, we started saying the high right things in the world. We followed them. I said the dance the governor and the deputy governor is down, a practicing, it will soon be open to the Edo state. Then they will know that the dance is no longer a secret, but a public thing. Now, when I got home, I told my wife, because she was there in one of these girls, I said, I said, the dance is in the public right now. 
I said, because the deputy governor has gone to court and get a court injunction. Now, people actually motivated him or uh, pushed him to do that, mm. to secure his own state. And uh, say if you are the one, you will do the same. Because in politics, it became obvious. The information available to the governor, the information available to the governor, Osa, if you climb the Iroko tree, you will, not, you will not see it. You will not. You will not on a daily basis. Same way the information available to the def deputy governor, if you climb half of the Iroko tree, let me not say the you also not. So are you getting me? Yes. So now the information available to these people, they have their own strategy men in different. Now you are aware that a meeting was held where the deputy governor was asked not to present himself. He was banned out of that meeting. Now that meeting was a strategy meeting. I want to believe a call a PDP man knows about that meeting. Where the deputy governor a, they have to bounce him back. Was, that, it, was it the last uh, ESCO? Not the ESCO. Meeting? Not ESCO. In he knows. He knows. In Abuja. <laughs> so, yeah, it so wasn't an ESCO. It was clear, a carcass. Yeah, it was a carcass meeting it that the there. governor called and bounced the deputy governor out. At that point in time, if you are the one, what do you think will happen next? It means that something has been. An information that, you know, whether you, th whether you take it or not, the deputy governor also have one or two persons that also want to feed him with information. Do they are loyalists or this? You know, we have people like that certainly, who play this double, double game. game. Now, the information available to the man from that meeting wasn't a funny one. I was like, I can categorically tell you because. Uh, let me not go there. Yeah, mm. your ears are, on the ground. are you getting me? Your ears are so, on the ground. now, the information yeah. that came out from there yeah. uh, wasn't a funny okay, one. Thank you, Dr. So, Pastor. Okay. We'll come back to okay. you. But that will be immediately after this brief break. Don't forget. We're looking at the few between His Excellency the Governor of Edo State and his deputy, which is in public domain, and Governor Baseke has refuted the allegations by his deputy, uh, Comrade Philip Shai. But we'll continue with the discussion after this break. You will agree with me that this discussion is getting more interesting. Uh, because um, my guests, uh, my analysts are dissecting and uh, unearthing some very important uh, information. And I believe that you are enjoying the program. Uh, Governor Obasiki has his own admirers. Uh, the Deputy Governor of Edo State, also, you will agree with me, also enjoy his own uh, support. Uh, but now, uh, the, there's... A, there's um, a common adage that went to elephant fights and <laughs> the, the grass suffers is in the local palace. Um, but let's just uh, look at it from the other way around. Uh, Dr. Maswell, you were actually talking about that the comrade that uh, Philip Shaibo got some information that may have informed yeah. his decision yeah. to rush to the court. Yeah and seek that injunction and be protected. Yeah. So you think it's right for him to it's very preempt? Right. Is his fundamental right? You think it's right for him to preempt the House of Assembly, preempt the state governor? You see, he's, he's, it's his right to do that to protect himself. He's entrenched in the Constitution. Yes, that shouldn't have been there. When you feel aggrieved in one area and everything, the best place to go is the court. If you have heard that the, the, uh, the deputy governor carry boys and guns and here and there, Eh? and started shooting sporadically in government as an everything to take what will you say you said madness has entered the town but in this case we are talking about the man exercising his for that matter human right by going to court to seek an injunction to say i want my office to be protected this is not only bad the governor showcasing me to the public now giving me all the freedom i just want to serve as a deputy governor and relax my case. Now, see, if you must know, this whole thing actually began even before the video that surfaced eh, of him romancing the former governor uh, Adam Oshomole. Now, if you go back to memory lane, the deputy governor was actually told to run as a senate. Is here. You can attest. It was pushed, as, will I use the word? It was being encouraged by his principal that his candidature will be help defeat the candidature of Adam Oshomole. 
in the wise wisdom of that one, he knew that it's not even up to half of the vote that man will pull in the do not, and he declined. So that relationship, eh, that breaking relationship, began from that time. Everything started little by little. Till when it became obvious that the video that showed him romancing with the opposition leader. And you know in politics, when you see that in a military era, in a military regime, when you see that you don't need to think twice as a leader. You don't need to think twice. So the governor, if the governor has also not called the political big wings and the House of Assembly, don't be surprised tomorrow the Adabu Shobole and the deputy will impeach the governor. I don't, that's politics for you. They will impeach the governor. So the governor was smart enough to quickly rally around the top notch of the political class and hold the National Assembly to his side. Before you hear the story that tells that state, the governor, state assembly. The, the, yeah, the state assembly. Before you hear the story that tells that the, the, the governor, there are seven uh, count charges against you, come and answer national assembly. That is politics for you. So what are we trying to say? What we should be concerned about is this: they are playing their politics over dominance. What we should be telling the governance should do suffer, whether they finish themselves in that manner or they leave themselves in that manner. Can the governor focus? on what is to be done. If Chaibu decide to go to APC or Oshomole decide to give him the ticket to run, we are the adults to decide who becomes our governor. But I wonder when some person will just sit down in their seat and think that they have the, the numbers required that the people, they are heavily loved by people because I've been in this office for so number of years, so because of that, I want to contest and everything. It's not like that. At those state, I, I just came back from Port Harcourt, at those state, voters are the most smartest voters you can ever think of which no one person whether you are a city governor whether you are etc etc you can easily influence and just push them to your side they look at your track record we know these people are dissident be see i'm saying it if the governor bring out a candidate today a state will not vote for him if the deputy governor bring yourself today as a candidate. I don't think I do stay I don't think. I don't think. I use the word I don't think. Well, it's your personal so opinion. what I'm saying, yes. uh, do people reserve the right to determine who they want to vote for? Okay. So they will stand and analyze the antecedent of all these people and know which best serve, just like we clamor for the return of the governor who is right there today. Eh? Are you getting me, sir? Yes. Same way we are going to sit down and do a critical analysis. Thank you very much, Dr. Manso. We'll come back to you, um, Ambassador Andre Igaloa. Now, a lot needs to be said about this issue. Now, there's something that Master said, that governance must not survive. Uh, Mr. Governor Baseki won the hearts of millions because of his infrastructural development in Edo State. And he has promised that he will finish strong Finishing strong means he must complete his projects. There are so many projects to be completed. The Upper Ekenwan Road is there. The Water Storm, people are saying it, it should be completed, whether it was started by another government or what, uh, beneath it to be deflooded. There are so many projects. And this governor is known for doing projects. So, don't you think this is a distraction to governors? this feud between Obaseki and his deputy? <laughs> to me, it has nothing to do with uh, distraction. Okay. Because I know God, you know, Obaseki has fought bigger battles and he was not distracted. This is just a mere family issue and I don't think it can distract God, you know, Obaseki. If you watch his antecedents and his uh, other fights, they are bigger than this. Are you saying the governor is a fighter? It's a fighter. Of course. Okay, maybe that's why they call him God Mato of in local palace, the Iron Man. Yesterday I was talking to him. I look at his two names, the English and the native name, yes. Godwin. In nowhere I said. Yes. He's almost rich. Yes. You see, that's why you tell uh, parents, when you are naming your children, you know the kind of names you give to them. It affects them. So this, this is no battle. This is no issue. It has been brushed aside, like what the governor said today, that we have no plan of impeaching the deputy governor. It maybe he's just crying woof when there's no, and uh, like what the state chairman, Nazi Bemez, he was on air yesterday to say, it's a family issue. 
it will be looked upon and uh, the rift will be settled. So be it. It happens every now and then in politics. So this one wouldn't uh, distract. If the court case that Obaseki fought in the last day couldn't distract Obaseki before he was uh, this uh, legacy group and whatever, he won it. That one was tougher than this. There's no, there's no issue here. Deputy has not been served impeachment uh, notice. Nothing is on ground. It's just that the, the, the deputy governor is just being agitated and, uh, you know, feet getting over nothing. But don't you think the go for the deputy governor to go to court, don't you think maybe he's having some mm. body heat? Of course. You no, know, he's having some uh, internal punches. Of course. Under under the under under too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, like don't I, you think you so? Know, like I said, yes. a good leader or a leader or, one, or somebody that wants to lead, you don't fight your boss. You learn from your boss. You cooperate from, with your boss so that it is your boss that will recommend you. If you watch the mutual relationship between Buhari and uh, Osibanjo, from Buhari's body language, he was, if he was given the chance, he would have given the ticket to Osibanjo because Osibanjo humbled himself. He played along. He is a professor of law. You know, a professor of law is, has to do with politics and everything, but I have a boss. I must take directive from my boss. In respect of the fact that people were saying, go and do this, do this, do that, he was still listening to the boss. In the later date, just that Buhari's hands were tied, he couldn't switch powers. So that is the game. Fine, it's a big lesson for, for both of them, especially the deputy governor, to learn. Because one day you will be a boss. Considering the circumstances with which you are working with your boss. Forget, let us not to be desperate about powers. If you look at Shaibu's uh, political career, for close to 18 years, he has been in politics eating. Two-time member of House of Assembly, uh, 18 in months in House of, of Rep, then eight years in Deputy Governor. So he has enjoyed politics. So he shouldn't, you know, end his political career this way. There are chances. If, watch the, the synergy between Oshimole and Pius Odubu. Odubu was the Deputy Governor. They worked in harmony. And Oshimole never allowed Odubu to be acting governor one, one day. day. And yeah, that record must be yes. stated. Oshomole never allowed Odubu to, to be, be acting and when governor. And Odubu one tried day. to say, I want to be governor, Oshomole said, we came together, we are living together. Odubu did not say anything, he left. But today, who is the NDDC chairman? You know Odubu? So what are we talking about? That's loyalty for you. Odubu has been returned again. Yes. It's the second time. Yes. The so first time they dissolved it. That was it. Then they were dissolved. They dissolved it. Okay, fine. But who submitted that name? It was a shomole, I am aware. What are we talking about? So it depends on your artistic, your legacies that you leave. This life is too short for us to leave a bad legacies for our children, for our friends, because of desperacy for power. Money aside, influence aside, let us live upright. Because one day you will be judged by, the, by your character and where you've worked before, how you worked with your boss. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to Dr. Mecca now. And this has to do with the 2024 governorship. It is believed that if there is any crisis at all between Mr. Godwin Obaseki and his deputy, it has to do with 2024. Yeah. Now, some persons believe that Comrade Philip Shaibu wants to be governor. Like Andrew Egalo has said, uh, within the PDP, there is this rotational policy. You know, and Shaibu is from a donut. But let me, let, me, let me coin the question this way. Don't you think the contest should be open? Should it be ethnicity driven? There is um, a group that came on air recently and they said they are clamoring that to diffuse the tension in the polity, it should be open. Capacity should be looked at. You know, credentials. Is this man able to perform? Dr. Mekai Kuga, what's your take on this? Well, before I react on that question, okay. let me quickly uh, make small input from what uh, uh, Dr. Andrew said. Okay. As regards to the, the clearance of the issue between the two governor and the, the governor, from the angle of the state chairman, Dr. Tony Azebuni, when he said yesterday that uh, the issue of deputy governor and governor is a family issue, 
that is a very wise statement. And uh, believe it or not, it's a family matter. Like I said earlier, it is a, 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 an issue between a father and son. It can be settled right inside the house, in the parlor, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, anywhere. Now, having said that, I advise those who are also, uh, you know, trying to set more fire in the issue. The governor should be careful on what he listens to. The deputy governor should also be careful on what he listens to. And those who are also advising, let the fight continue because they benefit from it. There's one adage in my language that says, when the land is not, uh, you know, in a good form, the, the king's men enjoy. It's just in my dialect. So a lot of people are benefiting from this. But let me caution them that the more they keep pushing for more misunderstanding, the more people's eyes are getting open. And by the time this matter is settled, those who are encouraging them to go more into the war will suffer it. And I think who has ears should hear. Now, when you come to the area of 2024, yeah whether it should be zoned to central, yes, central, whether it should be open to whether or not central or south. Well, PDP has their constitution. And uh, if in a do state uh, their constitution is zoning, they should take to it. it that, there, are, there are capable people in the central there are too many in the center that if it is being zoned to them, I am sure one person will come out of them. And uh, by the wisdom of the way uh, politics are going these days, I believe people are also not, no longer looking at you have money. You come from social background. Your father has been uh, in politics from a tiny memorial. So you are only the person that can let it be a lineage issue. No. Today politics, today voting, everybody is looking at who will be able to deliver, who will be able to have the mind of people at heart, the, 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 the take of people at heart. So if the constitution of PDP says zone, they should stick to it. They should stand by it. The do not has delivered, the do uh, south has delivered, or delivering up to this moment, then they should be able to look for somebody credible in a door uh, central. central. I think it will be a good one. And if you still look at it in the other way around, it wasn't constitution, constitutional. Yeah. It wasn't agreement. Then you throw it open. Wherever anybody that is capable of taking care of this state, making this state better than what it has been, should come up. I am sure in 2024, it's not going to be business as usual. Mm. There are other parties. Labor Party is there that is, you know, uh, uh, gathering momentum every day and night. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. APC is there also. And uh, there are people in APC, you can also say that this one was not as bad as this. I'm not going to refer to some of them that we are holding one office or the other. And until the end of the office, they never... They never come up with one particular thing. You can say, this is what next man did, even in his own community. Very unfortunate. We are waiting until 2024. There are people that must say, this is what will happen, and it will happen in a very right way, not in the manner of uh, let's kill to rule, let's divide to rule, let's, you know, whatever they can do, as long as their own kind of politics is consigned. Things are going to change in 2024. Now, in the area of deputy governor, if his interest is to become a governor in 2024, which has always been the pattern of politicians in Nigeria, politicians without conscience in Nigeria. I remember my friend, I remember when I was traveling uh, Lagos to Benin, preaching inside Luxurious Bus. There is one uh, supermarket we always meet when I drop in Luxur Luxurious Bus in New Lagos Road. And we, meet, we met there, we always meet there, that year he has not gotten married, including one of the uh, proprietor of a school in Iboba Hill. We always meet there. We are two good friends. We are good friends. And uh, he, when, he, when he was privileged to enter into politics, 
first year, second year, eight years, I think 12 years, about going to, is this 16, I'll be 18 years. And uh, when he came up, uh, some group of uh, 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 men came up with a kind of drama and said, now only me. <laughs> You know, okay. you, you, you can remember what I'm talking okay. about. Now, only me. So, how can it be only you in a do state? And uh, before you know it, he was unable to get even the primary. How much more to go to a general uh, contest? Okay, thank now, you. if the deputy governor has been two times member of the uh, House of Assembly, uh, about how many months, 18 or thereabout, in the reps, and the deputy governor, uh, close to 80 years now, and uh, he wants to jump up again and become the governor of Edo State. He can only make it if he has what it takes, the quality, the qualifications. If he has what it takes, qualifications not by education. Qualifications in the sense that all this period he has been here, this is exactly what he can be pointed at and said, you are the best. Because what we're looking at at 2024 is the best. If it's going to be the best, I shouldn't see any reason the governor will say you can't be a governor. The governor, the present governor cannot even stop him from being a governor if it's the choice of a do. Okay. Do likes. Thank you, thank you Dr. So, Emeka. So I, I want you. to, I want mm -hmm. to uh, uh, conclude in this remark that 2024 is not even now. It's still, we still have a long way to go in 2024. Okay. The politics are still open for people to start playing. Anybody who want to play, play it, but play in the right way until when we get there. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Maswa, uh, when we watched that uh, interview, that video, uh, Mr. Governor said, uh, Mr. Godwin Baksek said, that Philip Shaiba has not even discussed the issue of wanting to be a governor with him. He denied that publicly, that he's not aware. You know. So, now, do you think if the Constitution does not bar Philip Shaibo from aspiring to be governor, should anybody stop him? Uh, no, I, I've never. If you, if you look at my earlier statement, I, I never said uh, he shouldn't contest. But I only said, only more than at least, we are human. Uh, now, only me. <laughs> you just said it just now, now, only me. Is it supposed to be so? No. Uh, it's not supposed to be so. The Constitution does not, is his right to aspire to any level and everything. But if you have been favored by two prominent persons in your life, which is the Adamo Shomole and the current, uh, where he became a deputy governor by the same Adamo Shomole, if you have to put two of them into proper perspective, maybe the man who actually weighed the both sides, uh, this man wouldn't have known me if this man, the way this man took me from nowhere, etc. So he has weighed his option. Are, are you getting me? So he, if he chooses to dance to Shomole right now, uh, that's the politics, that's the same Shomole he was just abusing a few days ago. Uh -huh. He was just abusing a few days ago. Uh, that uh, you've taught us to. So these are politicians, it's their game. That's what they do for a living. So they are only not making you and not to come to studio here and be cracking our head for nothing. I see that is the order of the day. I think what we should be concerned about is that let governance remain governance. That's all. Till tomorrow, nobody is talking about Wiki again. So when he was busy looking for his own head, his own head and everything, people were hitting. Now he's a minister. He, to him, whatsoever you are discussing is irrelevant. I secured, I <laughs> secured my state. That is politics. Yeah. Forget about. They, they don't care over all those whether shame or no shame. Sir, it's it's only about their personal interest. So what we should be discussing here is the governance, because indeed, yes, I agree that the governor uh, is, is, is a business is a is someone that goes into he does contract. I mean, a um, project here and there. But I'm beginning to, uh, I'm beginning to, my idea about that has beginning to change. Going to the fact that uh, uh, this rainy season has given me a different side of the various roads that we have in Edo State. The, the ones that we had done last year, you are see, is, you, right now, they are failing. There is one man in my place of work, uh, Mr. Agbekan, I've forgotten his area, 
eh, his road right now is not possible. Every day he keeps crying on my head. I say, tell Debbie the station that by road, the governor should do better. I've forgotten the road. I should have mentioned yeah. it. But what am I trying to say? Yeah, most of all, the road. Mention, mm. is what mention my own. <laughs> okay. Uh, most of all, all these roads. Yeah, that. most of all these roads yeah. are failing. We are still have road that Ubemudia did in these states that you and I are still taking. It has not failed. How come we are now having a recent project, recent project that cannot even last the end of the we governor? We will surely investigate that. Please do. There is everywhere. Yes, I drive. I know I'm... See, I knew how much I, I spent all through one yesterday in mechanic workshop. Mm. I, I know what I'm telling you. I knew how much left my pocket yesterday. All to bad rules. But I was in Port I was like, man, I said, is this the same governor that all of them are accusing? You need to see the road. It's like ties. I was personally looking for a fair portion. I only saw that in one area, which I don't want to mention here. So everywhere in Port Harcourt. So now it's not just doing the road. Make the road to last at least four, five, ten years. So what am I trying to say? And um, um, for me to conclude, listen, there's another day in Bini that says, Alala mm Mofioto. -hmm. What that means is that if you must live from the pepper soup of the rabbit, it is when you are digging the hole, you do your contribution there. Right. Not when we have killed it, you start talking about <laughs> Nami Wali, the pepper soup. So, what am I trying to say? Yeah. You see this divisiveness thing you in politics. Yes, yeah, this divisiveness, na my turn, no my turn. Yes, for inclusiveness, let there is no party constitution for rotation. No. It's only personal interest. What you saw, what you saw in PDP eh, last year, PDP by the statutory standard, is it not supposed to go to a dose a central before they brought Obaseki in? So even when they brought Isaiah uh, Yamu in, was it the statutory right of the Bini? No. So when it comes to, this is what you are going to see. They look for who will help them win vote. Don't be surprised APC will still bring a Binima out tomorrow. Thank you. Because looking for when we, we, we get there. So you, let me leave those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are only just playing politics to just, gallery. Just a quick one. A quick one. Well, uh, I would say the issue of uh, the deputy governor and the governor should be brushed aside and uh, they should allow peace reign. But in politics, it is something that is bound. Once in a while, it occurs because of personal ambition, but we should be very careful how we, we try to be ambitious. Otherwise, it will make or mar our success in life. Thank you very mm. much. Dr. Mecca, just one word, please. Well, I, le let me encourage the governor not to be distracted. Okay. At least if he can uh, end his uh, tenure by coming to Ute, or permission extension, I and my people, they are suffering. Thank so you. That's serious. personal interest again. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, uh, you see, like, give us. Okay, that's the program. I must thank Dr. Maswell. Thank, thank you. you very much, Dr. Mecca Kuga. Thank you. Ambassador Andre Galoa, thank you very much. My uh, the program has been 60 Minutes Nigeria. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you did, keep a date with me. By the grace of God, next week we'll be here again. Different sets of uh, analysts. I will be dissecting another national issue. Until then, do have a wonderful weekend ahead.